Forms of Carbon Relating Structure to Property Carbon is one of the most common elements on Earth. It exists in three different forms, diamond, graphite, and fullerene. As we can see, these materials are very different in form and function, even though they are all made of only carbon atoms. In this video, we will learn that like with all materials, the properties of these three types of carbon arise at the nanoscale, where carbon atoms are arranged differently. Before we talk about the different structures of carbon, it is important to understand that crystals are distinct from molecules. Molecules are well-defined units with a fixed number of atoms. For example, in methane, we have five atoms, four hydrogen and one carbon atom. Crystals are more complex. They are made by repeating atoms in all directions. The number of atoms is too large to count and is never well-defined. Crystals have a unit cell, which is like a brick from which the crystal is built. The unit cell of the diamond crystal is shown here. The number of atoms and links between atoms is not fixed and can continue indefinitely. One of the properties of crystals is that they are sharp-sided. These sharp sides are called facets. Crystals of ice are formed when water molecules arrange themselves in hexagonal patterns which we see in snowflakes. These hexagonal patterns make themselves known externally in the shapes of ice crystals, which have facets flat faces with sharp edges. So, we can tell if something is a crystal by just looking to see if it has sharp edges. Let us now look at the crystalline forms of carbon. The first one we look at is diamond. We know of diamond as a brilliant jewel and also as the hardest known naturally occurring mineral. How can this property be explained? We need to look at the unit cell of diamond. In this computer model, the black spheres are carbon atoms. The reason that diamond is so hard is because every carbon in diamond is bonded to four other carbon atoms in a three-dimensional way. The resulting material is very hard. No other naturally occurring material can scratch a diamond. Diamonds are not only used in jewelry but also in cutting and grinding because they are so hard. The second pure form, or allotrope, of carbon is graphite. Graphite is used in your pencils. Your pencil lead is not really lead, it is graphite. Graphite is a soft material. The structure of graphite is different from the structure of diamond. In graphite we have a sheet structure as shown in this model. The sheets are not bonded with each other, they can slide off each other. The bonds between each sheet are weak and easily break. The pencil marks on paper are the flat sheets of carbon. These very diverse properties of materials which are both composed of pure carbon arise from differences in structure. The hardness and clarity of diamond is a result of each carbon bonding covalently to four other carbons. In graphite, each carbon forms a covalent bond with three other carbons. The third form of pure carbon is the carbon-60 molecule. It consists of 12 pentagons and 20 hexagons with carbon atoms at each corner forming a spherical molecule like a soccer ball. It is often called a buckyball. Here are some buckyballs drawn by a computer. The actual molecules are very small, about one nanometer. The molecules of carbon-60 are not held together very tightly. As a consequence, we can make a solution out of carbon-60. But how do we know that the carbon atoms in buckyballs connect and form a spherical shape? Crystal structures can be described in terms of planes of atoms. The perpendicular distance between planes is the interplanar distance, d. Here are two different D spacings in graphite. These distances can be studied using X-ray diffraction, the same X-rays used to take pictures of the bones of our bodies. The effects of diffraction can be seen in everyday life. The most colorful examples of diffraction are those involving light. For example, the closely spaced tracks on a CD or DVD form the familiar rainbow pattern we see when looking at a disc. When X-rays go through crystals, they diffract. The x-rays split in different directions. Different planes of atoms diffract x-rays in different ways and in a manner that is specific to the particular crystal structure of a compound. An x-ray diffraction experiment measures these different planes. The signals in the pattern correspond to different planes of atoms in the structure. This is how we gain information about the structure of a material. This technique can provide us with fingerprints of the different materials 
Each X-ray diffraction pattern for different materials is very distinct. Here we see the fingerprint of carbon-60, graphite, and diamond. They are very different from each other.